What is up guys? Got a lot going on in the man cave here. I've been setting up some computers for uh, my sister, for her kids. And since I've been messing around, I started working on a little electronics project over here that's going to... Uh, might make a little controller for my latest Mustang project. The uh, electric fan, the electric fan on the Mustang, I noticed that it must have the controller burned up because somebody had like a relay and some wires ran across the hood over to the battery. So uh, I could either replace the relay module, and I forget what they call it on these Mustangs, but it's not discrete parts. It's actually a whole box that has the fuel pump controller in it, the radiator fan speed relay in it, and a bunch of stuff. But I like how the newer vehicles will actually ramp up and down the fan on temperature. Have a soft start also, you know. It's pretty cool. Instead of just on or off or just a high and a low speed. So I have a MOSFET transistor in here on this little test board. And it's being, uh, let's put some light on the subject. Got a couple little just NPN transistors to change that 5 volts up to a, a bigger s signal to the MOSFET. And then MOSFET, I have an extra smaller radiator fan in here. <laughs> And uh, I have a temperature sensor hooked up because I want to see how hot this damn thing gets. It looks pretty hot. So I have this little test controller here, which um, it's just something I can easily change the duty cycle of the pulse coming out and the frequency to kind of just test what the motor will like and the MOSFET. So here's another little cool thing I got off Amazon for like 30, 40 bucks. It's like a little tiny handheld oscilloscope. I mean... <laughs> Can I, something like this, like decades ago when I was a kid, that would probably cost a couple thousand bucks. That's the, and today it's just like nothing for people just to make like those and sell them for like 30, 40 bucks. So uh, I'm going to turn the power on for this. I'm also going to watch and see how high the temperature gets. So it's at room temperature now, 77. I have a little sensor alligator clap to that heat sink there. So with the capacitor, I had to put a capacitor on the, uh, across the, uh, radiator fan because it didn't like just having pulses without the being filtered so that's at a uh, duty cycle 20 and a uh, thousand hertz let me turn down the duty cycle to 10 so 10 is not enough to get it spinning but i could kind of experiment with the frequency yeah it doesn't seem to like the higher frequencies any better you can see it changing when i change my frequency right there Go back to a thousand. Oops. And I could increase the duty cycle. As soon as I start doing that, the motor starts turning. You can already see, you know, the temperature starting to shoot up already on that heat sink there, which it's going to. I'm probably gonna have to order a big MOSFET, like a big one that you can mount to a heat sink, big freaking can one or something. Or just a couple, maybe just parallel a couple of those. Because this is a small fan compared to the one that's on the car. Although it, it does push some air. So we're at a... It's not 70% duty cycle. That's a 70 out of a... 100% will be 255 steps or whatever. 200, it's just how digital 16-bit or 8-bit, sorry. Because it's a 255. So, uh, so that's actually rather slow. 125 will be like 50%. And I just have this increasing every 10... So you can see that MOSFET heat sink's already 105 degrees and it's climbing. But it's moving some pretty good air at 50%. So that would be slowing the fan down to halfway. And you can see the square waves there, halfway. See how shitty they look when they're, you know, it's connected to the MOSFET. So I can speed this sucker up some more. And that's like 95% probably. Just by the way I programmed it, I limited it to 250. 255 would just be on all the time. It might as well be for time it's going across the capacitor. And actually, it might, uh, MOSFET very well could run cooler when it's got the fan up to full speed than it is when it's slowed down because a DC brush fan, you know, is going to pull a lot of current in it to get it up to speed. Sometimes you run like a motor at half, the current spikes could be higher than they are, you know, when it's at 100%. Although it's duty cycle, you know. 
with each moment of time, you know, the current spike might be a lot higher when I run it at 50%. So it's creeping up. 120, that's not, that's not nothing to bother me. When you put your hand on there, it feels pretty hot, but now that I'm looking at the temperature, it's still climbing, 123. Well, it might be stabilizing now. It is. Sweet. So it's not going to let the smoke out. <laughs> your uh, CPU processor runs hotter than that. And that's an IRF Z44. Those used to be real popular in car stereo amplifiers. You usually have four of them, maybe six, you know, in some of the bigger the amplifiers, to, you know, to about, do about 400 watts. It's moving some pretty good air. I'm gonna start. So now we've got the. I have that pretty stable. It's about 125. It's actually creeping up just a little bit. There is a certain point where they could let the smoke out of that thing. And I also can experiment with different frequencies to see if it moves up to like 4,000 hertz. That's a pretty common switching speed for like uh, for like AC motors. Gets it a little bit. And what I have here, uh, I'll let that run. There's a little MOSFET. Simple, simple program. You know, got the LCD and stuff programmed in, and then uh, my variables button one, two, and three for my inputs, frequency and duty cycle variables. Just a real simple program to go through uh, and then watch for me to push the buttons and increase the frequency or duty cycle with those buttons and then it tell me what it is on the LCD. And it outputs hardware pulse width modulation, channel one, the duty cycle, which is a, a number from zero to 255, 255 being 100% and zero being zero. This is the signal coming right out of uh, that thing, but it's on the wrong frequency, so I hit auto again. Should be able to see it, there we go. You can see the pulses are uh, at about 90 something percent when it's at 250 right there. 255 would be 100 percent, so it might as well be 100 percent right there. 135. I bet you that only start feeling pretty hot if I were to touch it. 130 something's pretty dang hot. I'll start slowing it down again. Run 8,000. That would be considered the carrier frequency. down about one. Get it down about 50%. So like if the radiator was cooling off, because I'll hook a thermistor probe stuck in the radiator to the input of this thing. The buttons in the LCD is just for uh, you just design it and I'll take that stuff off when I make the final board. It'll just run automatically off of the uh, temperature of the radiator to start ramping up. Then you have to have another input on the board, of course, when you turn an air conditioner on to make the fan go to 100%. You have to have 100% across the condenser coil. So yeah, it would definitely run hot, but what you would do is you would take, uh, ooh, 140 something, dang, just jumped up there. You would build like a nice little heat sink right here, and then you would, you would put that in the airstream of, the, of this fan the radiator fan on the car, so it's cooling that off. So it might be able to get away with one big MOSFET, although the, the car radiator fan probably draws twice the current that this small one I have is. You know, this has a pretty good sized motor on it. It's pretty fast for a compact one. I'm running 40 something now. Slow that sucker way down. See, it's actually getting increasing in temperature even though I slowed that fan way down. I got the duty cycle at 50. That's 50 out of 255. So it's like a 20%. And it's getting hot. <laughs> See, it's getting hotter. Way hotter now. It's actually getting danger territory for that MOSFET. Let me kick this up. See if that actually drops and just stays up there. Now it's dropping. See it? Once the motor's up to speed, the peak instantaneous current for each pulse will actually be less. The motor's up to speed. 
Ooh, it's shooting up that way again. Dang. That's crazy. Yeah. That's weird. So. Getting dang into the danger territory. I don't know what I could. We could look on here and see what the, uh, <laughs> the temperature range is on this thing. Oh, 175C. Oh, that's way hotter. Let's see here. I thought it would just say what it is. 347. Oh, man. That thing. The internals of that could get way hotter than I have it. 175C operating temperature. Okay, so I guess we're really at nothing to worry about, especially when I put it in the airstream. Ooh, I smell that MOSFET now, I think. Actually, nope. It's probably one of these wires getting hot. I don't feel that hot. I am pulling current through this. Oh, it's frying it. Look, it's fr Oh, man. I gotta shut this down. I'm letting the smoke out now. I'm frying the little test board. Look at that connection. Yep, that's enough testing. Awesome though, it worked awesome. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'll go from this test board. I'll use this test board to engineer my fan, and then I'll know what values I want to use for different speeds, and then I'll just program it in against temperature curve with a lookup table. And I'm gonna make my own variable speed um, radiator fan controller for that Mustang. So, I mean, it is a project car. So, anyway, I think that does. I think my sister's here, so I will catch you guys later.